Welcome back quantum opticians to our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. Today we want to discuss an efficient geometric representation due to Felix Bloch, the Nobel Prize winner Felix Bloch, that allows us to represent any state of the two-level atom in a very nice geometric way and that we're going to use a lot in the future of the lecture. So let's get started. So let me remind you again how in general we describe the state of any two-level atom. We describe it by these complex amplitudes C1 prime and C2 prime. And up to a global phase factor I can actually write this equivalently in the following way as norm C1 prime 1 plus e to the i phi norm C2 prime 2 with the probabilities of being in state 1 and state 2 being given by norm C1 prime squared and norm C2 prime squared. And those of course have to sum up to 1 due to the conservation of probability that we have in the system. Now if we look at this constraint of norm C1 prime squared and norm C2 prime squared equal to 1 uh, this suggests that we can actually write this state in an alternative way by introducing this cosine theta over two angle and sine theta over two angles here and uh, simply because cosine squared of theta over two plus sine squared theta over two equals one we have automatically built in the constraint of probability conservation in that way into our system. Now over what values do theta and phi have to vary such that I can represent any state of my two-level atom in this way? Well, uh, theta has to vary between 0 and pi and phi has to vary between 0 and 2 pi. And this allows me to represent any two-level atom state in such a way as we've written down here. So if you see those angles theta and pi theta and phi, this kind of suggests uh, thinking of them as latitude and longitude coordinates. So uh, you can actually think of any state now being represented as one point on a unit sphere, on the surface of a unit sphere, and uh, with its coordinates uh, theta and phi, the latitude and longitude coordinates on that sphere. So let's say we pick this state psi here, and it's represented by these angles theta and phi shown in the sketch and uniquely define the state that we have in our system. So we can actually represent any state of our two-level atom on this kind of unit sphere. That's the famous Bloch sphere that was introduced by Felix Bloch. So any state can, rep can be represented on this unit sphere and it's a very nice visual and graphical interpretation of our two-level atom state. So let's look at a few special cases for the two-level atom. We have, first of all, the south pole state down here. That's where all the atoms are in the ground state in state 1. Theta is 0, so everything is 1. Then we have the state 2, uh, where theta is pi, so cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is kind of everything in the excited states on the north pole of our Bloch sphere. Now what about the states in the equator? So the states for the states in the equator we have theta equaling pi over 2 and cosine of pi over 2 divided by 2 that's just cosine of pi over 4 and that's just 1 over square root 2 as you might remember from your mathematics course. So the state that we have here, for example, on the x-axis, where phi equals 0, that's just going to be given by 1 over square root 2, 1 plus 2. The state on the opposite side here, in the minus x direction, for phi being pi, uh, for e to the i pi equaling minus 1, that's just then 1 over square root 2 of 1 minus 2. And then we have the states on the y-axis, the positive uh, kind of state here in the plus y direction has an angle of pi over 2, e to the i pi over 2, that's i, so this state is just 1 over square root 2, 1 plus i 2, and the state on the opposite side, that's just 1 over square root 2, 1 
minus i2. So in general, you see that all the states in the equatorial plane are states where we have equal superpositions of being in state 1 and 2. The probability of being in state 1 and 2 is equal. And the angle that we have here in this equatorial plane defines the phase, the relative phase in this superposition state. Okay? So finally, let me just remind you uh, of a spin one-half analogy of the, such a system. So if we identify our two-level atom with the spin one-half particle with the kind of spin-down st state of the spin one-half particle being represented by our state one and the spin-up state of our particle being represented by our state two, the excited state, then we can actually define superposition states of spin-down and up and spin down and up in the same way with this phase factor of i corresponding to this 90 degree angle shift in the equatorial plane and without as we've done before. And these states actually, if you remember, these states are actually the eigenstates of the sx and sy operators in the spin one half algebra. So if you take sx operator, act with it on this plus minus state in the x direction, that just gives you plus minus h bar over two plus minus x and for the plus minus y state here that's just the eigenstate of the sy operator giving us eigenvalues plus minus h bar over 2 as we had for the z direction and the x direction. So these kind of special superposition states that we actually encountered in the x and y direction they actually correspond to the eigenstates of the spin one half particle in the x direction and in the y direction. So that's a nice analogy that we find when we kind of map the two level atom onto the spin one half system. All right, so today we found then a very nice way, very efficient way of describing any state of the two level atom using this Bloch sphere representation. And we're actually gonna make use of that a lot in the future lectures. Thanks a lot for watching, see you next time.